Hello and whoa, that's loud. Hello and welcome back to uh, Please Cancel Me. I'm J Dox, but my pseudonym probably doesn't matter anymore. I'm here with uh, Banjo Man, but that doesn't matter. I don't think. <laughs> well, or was it Banjo? Banjo. Yeah, it was Banjo, and I made yeah, fun of yeah, for it. But uh, sorry for ruining that last time. This is the Power ninety two point three WKVR, and Nate already ruined my pseudonym like two episodes ago. That was the absolute worst crap that I ever uh, wrote to open up this show with. And I'm glad nobody heard it except for my lovely parents and Yeah and Marty, who thank you for supporting my dumb crap. Uh, anyway, I'm here with Banjo Man Tristan, and he, oh, is, well, that helps. he is desperately at a lack for anything to talk about. So, all right, go for it. No, no, no. you go. There you go. It, okay, see you go. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. All right. First thing I wanted to talk about was the Baba Yaga, because that thing scares the crap out of me. What is that? I told you what that is. Say it louder than the mic. They can't hear you. I'm turning the mic off. Uh, yeah, so what is the Baba Yaga? I forget what you told me. Don't ask like it's a serious question. You know, I'm just going to say a bunch of dumb shit about a fake. Oh, so the Baba yeah. Yaga is this is a mythological, like, witch character. What? Just go. go. Is a, mythological. Is a mythological witch character. Um from some dramatic myth that lives in a house, like a cottage, and it just is a house that stands on giant chicken legs, and that is ridiculous and terrifying. Can you imagine that coming at you, like a house on giant chi- giant chicken house? Uh, that would be terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. And I've just been thinking about that for two weeks and just laughing about that in my head. <laughs> Are we going to go to songs already? <laughs> because uh, uh, it's already fallen apart. Uh, what we opened with was the Chiller Theater theme song from the 1960s, and coming up now, if I can open up this link, is Sam and Dave Live, Hold On, I'm Coming. That was Sam and Dave Live, the song Hold On, I'm Coming, which could mean a couple things. Um... And this is uh, The Power, 92.3 WKVR. Uh, I'm j Docs. I'm James. I'm here with Tristan. The names don't matter anymore. Yeah. Okay, um, we wanted to talk about Ratatoskr, which is probably a Pokemon, but it is also, I'm reading in North mythology, it means Drilltooth, and it is a legendary squirrel that runs up and down the world tree Yggdrasil to carry messages between the eagle on top and Nidog. The giant dragon worm on the bottom. Oh, Nidhogg. Yeah. Yeah. Nidhogg. Nidhogg's cool. Can you, are you speaking in the microphone? Yeah, yeah. Because you're very I far away from it. But okay. um, Nidhogg's cool. He's like this giant worm that people like sacrifice themselves to. It, sacrifice fencers to. Yeah. Uh, uh, video Norse, game Norse references. mythology. It's, I, I absolutely love mythology. Um, Norse mythology especially, but I don't really know a whole lot about it. I've just heard little bits. Um, but Greek mythology is also really cool, uh, the Odyssey being a great example. Um, and I just, uh, one of my favorite stories from it is when they're passing the island of the Sirens. And uh, the, the myth is that sailors will hear the song of the Sirens and want to hear the song so badly and where it's coming from that they'll just crash their ships into the rocks around the island, um, just trying to hear it like better because it's so far away. And uh, I... Odysseus, that's the main character, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he he uh, wants to hear the song, but he's also being really reasonable, so he's like, okay, I'm going to fill the rest of your guys' ears with wax so they can't hear anything. But also, I'm not going to have wax, but you're going to tie me to the mast so that I can't actually do anything, so I can just hear the song and we just sail by. Um, so he does like a, a practice run, and he has them tie him to the, the post and everything. He's like, okay, now if I tell you to untie me, do not untie me under any circumstance. And so they tie him up and everything. He's back there. He's like, untie me, untie me. And they're like, no, I can't do that. He told us not to. He's like, no, seriously, untie me. I really want to get untied. And they're just like, no, 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 we can't. He's like, oh, that's good. Let's go get dinner. And they're like, oh, okay. And they untie him. He's like, you fools. I told you not to untie me. And it's like this huge... Almost, I guess the word would be parable. You uh, fell for it. That was a test. Yeah, yeah. It, it's this kind of like parable about, um, like, as interpreted by somebody today, it probably didn't actually mean this, but it, this guy related it to, like, commitment devices that you create for yourself and how you wheedle your way out, like, really easily uh, by, like, 
just tricking your own mind into being like, oh, let's go get dinner. Oh, you fool. Oh, you mean literally exactly the way that I keep telling myself I'm going to go to the gym and then I'm yeah. like, well, I have homework and then I have to eat and I'm tired and exactly. I rationalize yourself to not do anything. Yeah, that is exactly it. Yeah. And it's just so cool to be able to pull these sort of symbolisms and uh, like meanings out of these really old stories that definitely didn't have all of those meanings that we put to it. Yeah. Mythology is cool. Yes. Welcome back to Mythology Cast yeah. <laughs> on the Power 92. Coming up next, Abrahamic religions, a controversial topic <laughs> on Mythology Cast. I don't know what other Mythology Cast is there to talk about. Uh, basilisks. Basilisks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> that reminds me, actually. See, I thought of basilisks just randomly, but uh, two weeks ago or something, our buddy Frank had one of those giant gummy snakes, oh, yeah. which is a total catastrophe, and it's probably, you know, if you ate it, you would yourself turn into corn syrup, and then the Department of Agriculture would come take you away and put you in a blender because you're made of corn syrup. It's a huge gummy snake, like <laughs> like three inches in diameter and like four feet long, and it's atrocious. I took a big bite out of it, and I almost threw up. No, but... It, it's, it's bad. Yeah, I got the idea because, you know, you put, especially college people yeah. such as us will tend to put gummy bears in vodka or some other sort of hard liquor and get it to soak up the alcohol and then eat gummy bears, which you think that makes a sense of sort of thing like, oh, then it tastes like gummy bears. It doesn't taste like vodka. Now, the trick is that it tastes like vodka all the time and you can't do anything about that. So you get the exact same taste of vodka. You just feel like a fool while you're doing it. The point is... <laughs> That I thought we get a three foot long snake and like a tub of vodka to put this huge gummy snake in, and it's probably like nine hundred percent alcohol or something. And you eat like a you take a big bite of the gummy snake, and you have that at a party like laid out that's just a vodka soaked gummy snake. And that I would call that the basilisk. <laughs> yeah, and that would be they have, big gummies are huge. There are tons of big gummies. Yeah, there's like there. a ton of gummy bears. Yeah. I would call that Ursine, <laughs> like the like the constellation. What? Play some music. Shut up. Oh, also, I forgot to say, um, shout out also to the only other person, aside from my parents and Ye and Marty listening to me, which is my buddy Miles, uh, who texted me that I'd forgotten about him. And also that my dad, to my dad, if you're telling me uh, not to curse, insulting me with a curse is not a good example that you're setting for your children. So think about that. Coming up next is Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, the song Nowhere to Run, 1965. If it'll load. Tristan, vamp real quick. What? Talk about something. Um, vamp. Vampires. There's vampires. Well, vampires are interesting because they're also like this... They're like a, a southern... European or Southwestern European. I don't know where Romania is actually, but I'm pretty sure like the whole idea of like Romanian vampires came out of, I think the guy's name was actually Vladimir. Oh, the, the oh, music's okay. on. And we are back. This is the Power 92.3 WKVR. Please cancel me. What you just heard was Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Nowhere to run. And right now, oh, is the mic on? Can you hear me? Good. Um, and it's past 15, so we are retroactively going to have to pay, play a PSA, and it looks like it's Report a Crime Day. And we're back, and, oh, I really disagreed with that PSA. I mean, I don't know. Crime is a thing that a functioning society doesn't work with, but I don't know. You think the... No, do you think the snitches get stitches rule in certain communities as a result of was came as a result of distrust of the police institution? I, I don't know. I can't say law experience. enforcement. That was a very controversial uh, PSA to play during this time. PSA nonetheless. Yeah. It's a public service announcement, and I will serve the public by saying don't listen to it. Well, I don't know, report a crime, but also don't trust uh the police, not the police as people, but the police and the justice system as an institution. This is the Power 92.3 WKBR, and that opinion was not associated with it, or the school of Juniata. They just let me in here. They didn't even. I broke in. Report that crime, I dare you. Coming up next, uh, since I'm not playing any more of my dad's music, is some trash techno. It is 
Pow Pow by LCD Sound System. Hi, just remember that the end of that song had some foul language in it. I cut it off just in time. That was uh, Pow Pow by LCD Sound System. And I played that one because I'm trying to reassert my dominance over this radio show by playing some trash music. I love my parents, and they're sending me cool music, but my dad is seriously texting me about, like, the next song uh, will move you into the 1960s, and after that, wake everyone up uh, with the Ramones. And I, I'm not trying to have, like, a rotation to this thing. Now, this is not a serious... My dad's, like, running this show for me right now. I, was, I don't know if I told you. I was talking to my friend Joey, who does the station up at um, the, the, the WVU, yeah. the school there. And they have, like, a formula to it where they have rotation. Like, you play a hot song, you play a cold song, you play a happy mm-hmm. song, you play a soft song, you play a sad song. You do – that's not what it is. But you do, like, a cycle of it. And you pull, Like, to manipulate the roller coaster of emotions in your <laughs> audience, which is probably some bizarre psychological crap. Um I don't know. I don't know. We just make excuses. I don't think things that far ahead, and now my I feel threatened. <laughs> so uh, this is please cancel me. The W uh, KVR ninety two point. I'm, I'm losing it. Ninety two point three. The power. Oh, see, so you know it better than yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're totally fried from yeah. finals. That's why we got zero material going on right now. Is yeah. because we got no idea what we're talking about. Either that or we're just making excuses. Probably a little bit of both. We were seriously about to start talking. Well, yeah, excuses. We were about to start talking about little headphone holes and jackets <laughs> and stuff. Which on like the inside of your jacket pocket. Like there's a, little, there's a little hole in there where you put the headphones wire so it connects to your iPod or whatever in your pocket. And then it goes through the thing to yours. Yeah, who I've, never, that? I've never had a jacket that even has that. I don't know really? if that exists. Oh, yeah. I've had like every single sweatshirt has that. Cool. Mm-hmm. But then it's on the backpack. And you just can't reach, like, whatever you have playing the music, and it's kind of silly. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I had an old Walkman when I was a kid. Did you? I I had, like, a CD. I didn't have a Walkman, no, but I had a CD player, and then, like, I had this weird generic MP3 player for a little bit that was just shuffled. Oh, I did, too. That was cool. I had a bunch of... <laughs> I swear to God. This was, like, my eighth grade. I had this old... Ran on like a single AAA battery MP3 <laughs> player, and the shape was like a trapezoid or something. Wow. It made no sense. But I had tons of like Nightmare Before Christmas songs <laughs> on it, and like remixes of that, and a bunch of novelty songs about video games that I ripped from YouTube. Okay. I just had the worst taste in music for that period of my life. Uh, but before that, as a child, I had a Walkman little CD player, which was so cool. Uh, because I had, like, the Star Wars Episode Two soundtrack and, like, the Batman Beyond soundtrack and, uh, like, the Aaron Carter CD that was, like, the first one <laughs> that had, a, like, where he beats up Shaquille O'Neal or then he has a party or something. And it's just the worst absolute trash. And I'm going to play that on the next show. So look forward to that yeah, audience like, or when we come back yeah. from a uh, winter break because I'm going to play some hot or uh, late 90s Aaron Carter jams. Uh, but, yeah, talk about something else, Tristan. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It, my MP3 player, it was, like, my brother's. Half the stuff I own is, like, formerly my brother's. Um, and I just had, like, his songs on it, and I didn't know how to, like, upload my own songs, being, like, a 12, 15-year-old kid who has no idea what he's doing technically with his life. And uh, I would just listen to that and just be walking along and be like, this song's weird, but I'm listening to it. And I listen to a lot of really weird and probably not good for me songs. What, like Run DMC? I don't, I don't know. Kid. My brother had some weird songs on his MP3 player. I kind of wish I would have grown up on Wu-Tang instead of Aaron <laughs> Carter. But that's kind of a pipe dream. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to my parents' music. Here is Going Up the Country... Can't buy canned heat. Oh, wait, it's the wrong mic. Wait. Welcome back to 92.3 WKVR, The Power. Uh, This is Please Cancel Me, and that was Canned Heats Going Up the Country from Woodstock 89. 69. 69. Lean into the microphone. They can't even. Uh, I know you're not going to say anything because you're you're not leaning into the microphone. So, So, let's talk about it. Wait, no, we just had some... Oh, wait, it's weather time. <laughs> you know, you think we would get better at doing this since... I don't know, what is this, like my sixth or seventh yeah, show? Yeah, this is my second. Yeah, and you think I'd get, like, 
in some way better at doing this, and I'm yeah. really tremendously not. So, uh, for Huntington, Pennsylvania, the weather is currently 31 degrees Fahrenheit with some light snow. And the big headline says 20 inches of snow reported. But that looks mostly in New York. But hopefully we'll have it here, and then we will not have to go turn in those papers tomorrow. This is the finals week edition of Please Cancel oh, Me, where we don't have anything to talk about, except for what were we going to talk about? Oh, that was your your topic. Okay. Uh, it was the restaurant. The restaurant yeah, from yeah. Pulp Fiction, where they go they go in and they have like a Buddy Holly waiter and like Marilyn Monroe people, and you sit in a car and you get a $5 milkshake. Is that is that ever a real restaurant? Did that? I, I mean, it looked like they were in a real restaurant, but they, it might have been a set. I'm not sure. That's the thing. I wonder if it's real, or I wonder if following that movie there has been, like, someone made a restaurant to emulate that. I feel like someone might have either already had one or made one after that. I definitely need to find it, and I go I need to go there, and if there's not a $5 milkshake... I bet, I bet like, Sonic on Halloween is like that. Son- Sonic? Well, oh, the, oh, yeah, the drive-in. That, sound, that sounds, like, very weak compared to yeah, probably. what it would actually be. I want to get a big dumb steak or something, and then I want to dance, and then I want whoever I'm with to OD, and then I have to freak out and set off the person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. No. All of that sounds totally no. miserable and stressful. Yeah. But Pulp Fiction, huh? Yeah. It's a good movie. Good we really have nothing to talk yeah. about right now. Um, but I... Do you think... Do you know the show Dirty Jobs? Yeah. Where that oh, guy goes around and stuff? Because I'm wondering if he ever went to, like, a German S&M dungeon. Uh, probably not. No. But he was formerly an opera singer. Really? Yeah, which explains his golden voice. Oh, ah, okay. Um, I absolutely love that show. I, is it, He's sniffing into the mic. It's definitely not going on anymore, right? Like, I don't think so. I yeah. think he finally got a <laughs> critical skin infection and died. Because he's been swimming around in, like, Cow- fish poop. Yeah. Uh, so swimming around in dead fish and broken eggshells for the rest of his life. Um, but he's gone yeah, to hand he, sanitizer hell. He he does like commercials now. Uh, like they just want his voice now, which is the dirtiest job of all: marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. That was the best yeah, joke I'll have all yeah, night. He's actually standing up right now, so that was part of his uh, act. Yeah, I'm always standing up here because I don't have a place to set my computer down. And I just put it up here on top of this thing, and then I stand up, and it's kind of a pain. I don't know. I'm a little nervous to sit down after I broke that chair the one time, and the <laughs> chair is still sitting here in the corner, just broken. Yeah, it's not a frequent thing for you to break a chair. No. No. Just so everybody's. Well, not in sure. here. When I go home, I break chairs really? all the time. Yeah. Oh wow. I I've never Please. broken a chair in my life. Are you? I lying? just buy I buy a bunch of uh, cedar breakable prop wood chairs all and smash them around. Chairs. Yeah, exactly. You ever see the Eric Andre show? No. One of the best things that they do, it's like, it's makes fun of Jay Leno type late night talk shows and stuff. And everything, every time it opens up by him, like screaming and running in and destroying the set because it's all like (laughs) plywood furniture and stuff. And he just breaks everything for every episode. That's fantastic. That's what I want to do. And that's kind of my inspiration for being on this show is I'm, if I'm trying to think of something like a topic, because we don't have anything planned, we don't have anything to talk about. I'll like just like sit here and like stare out of the distance and think, what would Eric Andre come back from a segment on and just say like, and up next, <laughs> existential crisis or something. It's a really great show. I mean, and it is final. Then they bring in like a, a bear on a leash, like through the curtain, and like Michael Duchovny or something falls down a flight of stairs and puts on a big, and then Eric Andre puts on like a green screen morph suit and <laughs> pretends to be a cyclops in public or something. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could have the existential crisis. In this we could. What kind of existential crisis do you have in this oh, week, Tristan? Like, am I the only human that's actually here? Is this just a simulation? Oh, but, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I, told, uh-huh. I was talking to friends about that earlier this week. That is an interesting topic, though, because, like, having that thought that, like, you are the only actual person, and then the actual other people are just putting you in a simulation just to see how you act. So you are a lab rat. What would you do if you found out that that was the case? Uh, like, for your entire life, like, I mean, born and die? I mean, 
I, I would probably still just have to live my life because even though it's a simulation, it would still be my life. I guess I, I couldn't it's get out of it. It's the only life you have. Yeah, I, I, I can't know. get out of it. I don't like, know. I, what if so, they said, like, the aliens, like, teleport into your brain and they speak to you telepathically and they say, like, all right, you figured it out. Um, so we're legally required now to give you like some sort of human rights. So you have the choice if you want to stay in the world or not. They're aliens and they're like, and they have human, human rights. rights. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So I'm at, I would hope. Yeah. Would they say a like, super they advanced you, alien like, race? Lord Snarf rights or something? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think if we ever made contact with aliens, there would be like a lot of like really bad media about it. Like, cause if yeah. you think of a name, like off the top of your head, it's Blarg Snarf or Xenas yeah. or something, which is, like a ludicrous word, and yeah. that's kind of like part of the joke of aliens. Do you think they would come down and that would be essentially like alien blackface? The yeah. media's depiction yes. of like crazy aliens with weird and names like, and like 12 eyeballs on eye stalks yeah. and stuff. And like the original like gray, I think it was called the gray. Yeah. And that like giant eyed, like big head, small body, like creepy alien. Like what if, what if they just come down here and they're just like, oh, that's offensive. Yeah. What if they're kind of like that? Like their eyes are larger than ours yeah. and their head's slightly bigger, but like when you have a ludicrous caricature of them, it's very demeaning. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Talking, like, if we ever make contact with aliens, I like to think that there's other intelligent life out there. It's my opinion. But, uh. That is the official it's... opinion of WKPR yeah. and Chumiata is that aliens That's are real and they're offended. <laughs> That's <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, it's just like, it would be so hard to actually communicate to them because. Who would, who, I mean, would their language be anywhere near ours? Like, would would they even have a vocal language? It's oh. it's just, like, it's crazy to think about. That's a really interesting idea, and that's something, that's a complicated thing about, like, possibly transmitting something to aliens that scientists have talked about, and they figured yeah. this out, because they might not have language, so how do you communicate to them? Like, how do you even say, like, we are this or something? You have, like, the Voyager probe or something yeah. that has, like, a picture of a person on it and, like, our star map. Yeah, and it's got a three, four, five triangle, which, like, shows that you understand basic geometry, which shows that you're an intelligent species. Yeah, um, but for a transmission or something of any sort of, like, data signal, like light beams or something, if they don't catch the Voyager probe on yeah. some chance, um, the, the question is, like, how do you talk to them then? And it's, like, a really tough thing because they're, like, they might exist in a universe where the laws of physics don't work the same. Like something, uh, one of the things they tried doing was conveying the information of the direction an electron spins hmm. uh, to say, like, yes, we know how electrons spin. Uh, we are an intelligent, like, this advanced, we know this out here. But then they, that seemed like a basic fundamental thing to communicate. But yeah. then they figure, well, what if it's in a weird world where physics are different and electrons just don't work the same way or that stuff doesn't even exist. So um, they went through a bunch of different uh, ways to do this. And if someone has a name for it, hit me up on Tumblr.com. Please cancel me Tumblr.com. Yes, I haven't plugged that site in a while. <laughs> um, but what they settled on was they transmitted a sequence of prime numbers because uh, they felt like, well, they felt like, what can we transmit? Like, what about like a rhythm, like a beat or yeah, something? Like, yeah. no, that occurs in nature, like a pulsar. Like, yeah. Like, you know, rhythms are, that doesn't convey that we're intelligent, but like nothing in nature produces a sequence of prime numbers. Oh, okay. I didn't so that's what we transmit out to say there's, you know, people that can think and do some math and learn about prime numbers and stuff somewhere out in the universe. What if someday, like, you came across, like, someone was out in space, some human, and they came across, like, the alien equivalent of a Voyager Pro? That it's just like this weird orb or something or like this shifting four dimensional shape and they have no idea what it is because yeah. it's from like another universe with different dimensions and crap. So you have no way to like, and that you have no way to figure out what it is or like how to get information out of it, but it's just this thing that we found and we think it's the Voyager probe equivalent and then that becomes the grand puzzle of the century or something. Really I've been cool. talking about dumb aliens for a whole lot of time. So it, is ten about ten forty five and it's time for the news. Wait a minute, this isn't the right document. Okay. Campus news. Uh so far the death toll for final season has reached uh sixteen total students with another thirty six injured, four of which in intensive care. This is the highest finals-related mortality rate the school has had since 1982 following the invention of Blue Books. 
and what else? Muddy, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, Eagle's Landing, is uh, going to be getting rid of the excess food order before the end of the semester, so stop by and use up the last of your DCB on some cases of lobster tail, creme brulee, and fancy feast chicken. <laughs> Uh, the radio is shutting down after this semester. We failed to gain the $10,000, uh, needed to keep Bradley Upper Crust's lawyer dad from bulldozing it to put in a strip mall. And we would need a miracle to pull it off at this point, dot, dot, dot. Now we wait for it. And nobody came through the door with our deus ex machina, so the radio is closing after all. Thank you and good night. Wait, no. <laughs> yes, that was fun. That was the news. Yeah, Say cool. something, please, for the love of God. Give me some feedback. Uh, I mean, I love your fake news uh, because it's actually real. It's not. Yeah, yeah, it's actually real. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Finals is pretty crazy for a lot of people. Um, personally, it's really moderate for me. Uh, I hope we can definitely offer some relaxation or tension. We should probably make people more tense. Nope. No, oh, no, definitely make people more tense. It's yeah. time to, as my dad said, wake people up. The rotation is now saying, the Ramones. Now that you're all woken up, we're going to put you right back to sleep with poetic devices. Yeah, well, so for me, it's hard to do improv. And since we have no material, like, because I have... I, I put caesuras in my speech, and that's not probably the right use of it because a caesura is a intentional Wait, scissors caesura. Yeah, caesura. <laughs> uh, um, but a caesura is like a intentional pause in a piece of poetry. I'm hearing it and, right now. Yeah, exactly. And it's like it's just the way like my brain works. So it's probably not good for improv because I'm not like bouncing off the walls, just shooting ideas everywhere. Um, but yeah, I don't know. No, you gotta. There's poetic devices. For yeah, you, you gotta go rapid fire, like improv. You gotta go. I don't know. You gotta say things. It's dangerous. I respect let's players a lot. This is. Yeah. We should do that for practice. We should like start doing like we live should. streams or something just so yeah. we can talk. That would be fantastic because we can curse as much as we possibly want, and nobody can do anything about I it. Curses. I don't curse. What do you mean? <laughs> ha, gotcha. Fine. Ah, yes. No, I saw. Did you see that compilation of the game grumps where it's like every. F bomb yeah. from the yeah. Kirby playthrough. Yeah. That's good. Um, I don't know, let me talk more about aliens. You know, I think would be this is a welcome back to Alien Talk alien on the Power Nine two point three WKBR. This is interesting. No, I was always wonder like if you just made contact with an alien species and you figure out how to communicate and stuff with them, that would be like the coolest three weeks of my life. Would we have to figure out immigration laws for that? Wait, hold, let, let's take it this one step let's at a time, Tristan. Oh, okay. Um, but imagine, like, if they transmitted their entire internet to our entire internet, and we just switched internets. They probably have we one. merge well, internets. Yeah, that'd be. That'd if we, be if then, you know, the Comsci people manage to figure that out. So that's your job. That'd be the worst Wi-Fi connection ever, though. It would take years to download that game. Okay, on, I don't know. on Lark's North Bay. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, anyway, no, but I think that would be so cool to have their entire internet as yeah, just like all like at once. Stuff, share. Imagine being all of a sudden you get access to all of the history and culture and everything of that like would be another fantastic. alien species. Like, like think they, many, they think, have their think about the huge variety of human culture and art and stuff, and imagine you just have access to there'd be so much like yeah. cool new information. How about we just like try and learn about human culture? Yeah, since. We're That's boring. No way. <laughs> okay, so my dad was texting me, new parents beer drinking game. Every time you say like, we take a drink. <laughs> so, That'd be a good one. I like the sound of that. Like, it seems like a pretty likable likeness. How are you, like, feeling? Yeah. Um, but I that would be really cool to, like, that, read their Wikipedia equivalent. Um, yeah. Because it would just it's just a giant repository of information. Yeah, imagine hitting random on Space Sail in Wikipedia. Oh, that'd be really interesting. This stuff's partially why I loved the Mass Effect series so much, is because they did a big job of... That's a video game about being in space with space aliens and making, you know, complex moral decisions. Saving the universe. Pretty much. But they really develop 
they don't have 50,000 different alien races like Star Wars has where you just make a crazy slug creature with eyeballs. They took a lot of time to develop and flesh out like a handful of space alien races and stuff. And they all have like complex cultures and you see interesting ways when we integrate into the grand galactic community, like our culture mixes in with others. Like there were Turians, which were these uh, meritocratic, like military, cool, you know, bird alien people. It was so cool to say, I really picked up on this one reference in some expanded universe fiction to a Turian hair metal band that was just, just these funky space aliens with exoskeletons and stuff just doing glam rock. <laughs> and I thought that'd be so, that's kind of, that would be a hipster thing to do is you just like, we're making our Peruvian pan flute band, except it's Peruvian pan flutes from another alien planet. Yeah. And that's just picking up on other people's cultures in funky ways, but that seemed like super cool to me. I'd love to see aliens adapting human culture in weird ways. Yeah. Or, so. like, or like we start liking their type of music that dates back to like their equivalent of like zero AD. Yeah. But I just, it would be so, so interesting to meet aliens. And, but who's to say we aren't the most advanced? So we, we end up finding these aliens, and they're just tribal. Yeah. That would be really interesting. And that's, there were some aliens like that in the game, too, that are just horrible war species or something, and are as bad as the human condition is with all of their who knows what. I don't know what I'm talking about again, sorry. With uh, just natural cultural violence and stuff. That yeah. There were some aliens that were, like, a lot cooler, and they were, were the peaceful, super... Uh, cultural, artsy, kind of, you know, well-philosophized, cool, hyper-advanced aliens. But then there were also pretty advanced aliens that were, now nah, we're just going to... We're just going to kill everybody. Yeah, they were just very aggressive. Yeah. And that was interesting. Which, which is an interesting... Dynamic. Yeah, it's an interesting take because, like, say in the future we actually get, like, a, a, a space fleet. Would we arm ourselves? Like, if we had the capability to, would we arm ourselves, even if we didn't know anything was out there? Or would we go completely unarmed? That was, and that was another part of it, too, that we, when at first contact, it was kind of like a military standoff with these space aliens. Because some dudes found them, they fr- some space navy humans, like, found them. Like, I'm really freaked out. Like, oh, what do we do? I don't know. Point guns at them just to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, speaking of which, let's trans, trans, oh, that was, um, previously was Ramon, I want to be sedated, it was a very basic song, I hope that now that we've woken you up, we put you right back to sleep talking about dumb trash. Here is an alien related song, this is the Aquabats, Martian Girl. Me, me, me. Once again, and for the last time in forever, because we're not doing this anymore, no, we're going to be back oh, next yeah. semester, uh, this is the Power 92.3 WKBR. Go out to the station. The show is Please Cancel Me with James. Forgot the yeah. alias at this point. Yeah. And, and the guest. The guest. Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Okay, fine. You keep yours. No. Anyway, <laughs> um, thank you everybody for listening. Parents, yeah, and Marty, Miles, Mara. Uh, Nate's not listening because he's a punk. Uh, Brad, maybe. He's doing homework. Whoever else. I'm trying, I've been trying to record it finally this week. Uh, I've just got this dumb little hand recorder right here sitting on top of the soundboard. And I'll try to edit some sort of MP3, print it out on CD for y'all for Christmas. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, yeah. we're done. We're not coming back till next semester. Not coming back ever because we going. got canceled finally. Yep. yep. All right, thank you for listening. This has been Please Cancel Me. And, you know, put some hot canned tracks back on.